Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today I don't have my camera lady, and sorry about the glasses. It's just, it is so sunny out here. Like, God, what are you doing, man? Turn it down. But what I do have is an LC500. I got very lucky. Beaver Toyota in Cumming, Georgia allowed me to review this car. Now, if you don't have time to watch the whole review, make sure you at least watch when I have the external mic on the exhaust. It is one of the best sounding V8s I've ever heard. I think it is 100% safe to say that Lexus killed it with a design on this car. When it comes to the front grille, Lexus is putting this grille on pretty much all their cars. And it's not just a simple grille, it's not just a makeshift grille. Let me show you guys. So the bottom of the grille is stretched out. And then when you come to the top of the grille, it starts to beat. It's kind of like it's breaking the sound barrier. And if you look at the front design of the bumper, it kind of has a wedge design. So it's kind of like the car is going so fast that it's pulling through the sound barrier. I also favor the tri-design headlights, gives it a nice, foreign look it looks like an alien ship you're going to have active ducting on the front bumper and that's going to feed your 21 inch rims and your 245 wide tires in the front and you're not going to have no drilled rotors or anything like that because the car is a touring car it's not a track car when it comes to the mirror you have a nice chrome accent on the front and that just kind of helps give the car an upper class look matching the front grille and it's also going to have the chrome on the top trimming of the car that glass roof is one of my favorite parts of the car. It just really looks nice. You have a side skirt that's not too protruding, but it leads to active air ducting as well. You guys know I hate fake air ducting. That's gonna feed air to your 275 wide tire in the rear, and that's gonna be on a 21 inch rim. Kind of gives you LFA vibes here, but instead of having the active ducting in the rear of the LFA, they put a turn signal light, which is appropriate because it's a touring car and it's not a sports car. You have dual tip exhaust in the rear, but it's actually quad. And the car is a lot wider in the rear than it is the front. So if the car was as wide as the front in the rear, it would stop about right here. So I would say they added probably three, four, maybe even five inches. The car is always gonna look good. Check out these door handles. You push right here, the car feeds itself to you. you open the car and then you can check out the inside. And when you wanna lock the car, you close the door and you just push right here car locks itself. Gotta love the super wide doors. I know it helps with sound deadening and there's this material here. I don't know if this is carbon fiber or just plastic, but it feels super light. I'll explain this to you guys in a little bit when I'm driving the car. This is really cool. I'll explain what it does. It actually has a function. When it comes to the lock indicator here, it's not just a little tab that goes up and down. It is actually an illuminated light at night and it's illuminated green. The seats physically look really good, but they're even more comfortable than it looks. All right, so this is the interior of the car. I'm gonna start it up so you guys can see the startup sequence. When it comes to the LC500, they pushed the dash as far as they could away so that the passenger and the driver are very comfortable because it's a touring car. The car feels very good. The paddles feel amazing. All the storage is pretty decent. It's not the biggest. And then again, you do have a little space in the rear. Those are seats, but we all know that's basically used for storage. The buttons are very nice. And when you're driving the car, there is little to no road noise. You do have a sunroof, but it's not going to slide the glass back. You just have the visual of the sky. I love the design that Lexus came up with. This is a haptic feedback sensor and you can control your heated and cool seats from this. This is starting to grow on me, but it's never gonna be faster than buttons and dials. One thing I love about the heated and cool seats is that they respond instantaneously. I mean, if you wanna turn it on hot, you're gonna feel it immediately. When you turn it on cold, you're gonna feel it immediately as well. The trunk is so tiny. Let me show you guys. Take a look at this. Guys, I don't know what you could really put. You can put golf clubs, that's about it, but it's a touring car. Again, you're supposed to have one of these when you have an LX570 at the house. It also has a V8 from the ISF, which is a five liter Toyota engine. And I heard these things are bulletproof. If you own an ISF or an LC500, let me know down in the comments how reliable it's been for you. I think it's enough of the interior. It's time to do some POV. You guys are in for a treat. Let's go.
right, guys, so that's it for my review on the LC500. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Would you buy this LC500 for MSRP starting at $105,000? I think a lot of people would. Me, not really personally, because I'm not there yet in life, but yeah, when I hit 40, 50 years old, totally gotta have one, I definitely will. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This LC500 was reviewed by Tim. Peace.